Venice exists in the harshest environment on earth, where the sky meets the water on the shores of a lagoon in northern Italy by the Adriatic Sea. Venice also experiences an uncertain future, mainly due to rising sea levels, which are due to the changes in climate, which are causing periodic flooding of the city, which bring a phenomenon called the aqua alta, which cause physical and chemical damage. If you walk along the shoreline and along the canal side of Venice, you will see deterioration of the brickwork and even um, the holes in the sides of the walls that are as big as cannonball indents. This leads to acts of architectural desperation by the residents as they try to plug up the fabric of their city with concrete, rubbish, rubble, chewing gum. The Italian authorities have responded to this crisis by allowing the construction of the Moses Project. This is a series of 78 gates that are mechanical underneath the sea, and they perform the function of a robotic giant King Canute, which literally proposes to hold back the tide, like the ancient king of Denmark, in order to stop the destruction of the city fabric. But ecologists are concerned that even the periodic um, uh, damming of the flow of water from the Po Delta will cause unpredictable changes to the Venice ecology. Yet Venice exists because of its relationship with technology. It has allied itself with the latest technologies of its era, the most advanced technologies of its time. Of course, when the city was being founded in the 9th to the 12th centuries, these technologies were agrarian. They involved the drainage of water from the land, the construction of canals, the use of wood piles to shore up the foundations of the buildings, uh, which form an important part of the fabric today. With the advent of the Industrial Revolution, a new set of technologies exploded onto the scene, bringing great power and wealth to the city through the top-down, energy-intensive subordination of matter down to the atomic scale. And this came with a great ecological price that Venice is still paying today. But although mechanical technologies are impressive in terms of their hard power, they are not the most pervasive, nor indeed the oldest technology that we have access to. Of course, that technology is life. And despite what you'll hear from, from people who talk as if life is a machine, life works in a very different way to our mechanical technologies. It uses soft power. It persuades and orchestrates. It is flexible, robust. It has the capacity to surprise us and the ability to deal with the unexpected, which is completely different to what machines do. So right now, we can start to design and engineer lifelike technologies. And this brings a whole set of new tools, a new design portfolio to the future of Venice, which, as you'll remember, loves its technology. It's intimately entwined with it. So we designed a scenario in which lifelike technologies could literally equip the fabric of the city itself with the capacity to fight back against the elements in a struggle for survival. And this is the technology that we chose. This simple oil droplet that is in a, a, a water environment um, is a protocell. It's programmable, it's a chemical entity, and yet it has lifelike properties. It is able to move around its environment without even shaking the dish. It is able to sense its environment, doesn't like its own waste products. It is able to create microstructures. And so we put this protocell technology to work to try and address the stressed, ailing fabric of the damsel Venice. What we designed was a series of metabolisms, chemical interactions, that allow the technology to do work for us. So the first set of um, interactions allow the technology to be um, put into the uh, Venice canals and then move away from the light down to the darkened foundations of the city, which rests upon wood piles, as you remember.
Here, the second metabolism kicks in. It starts to use local resources, dissolve minerals, and dissolve carbon dioxide, forms an accretion technology, which forms the basis of an artificial limestone reef, which spreads the area on which the city is standing and stops it sinking so quickly down into the foundations, the muddy delta soils on which it's been created. In this way, we create an architecture that connects the city to the marine ecology and is, in sense, is sensitive to the changes that are happening in, in the environment in real time. But of course, you know, Venice faces many more problems in terms of its future than just sinking down into the mud. But living technologies offer something new to us. When we're thinking about making our cities, they offer a new way of making. They offer a new way of using local resources. They offer a technology that doesn't just take from its environment, but can give something back that is meaningful as well. Right now, when we design our cities, we predict the future. We use hard power then to design and engineer for all possible solutions. We can't always get that right. Now, we can use living technologies within our cities to use soft power to design and engineer with. And uniquely, this can be responsive to the environment in real time and help us manage the challenges of an unstable earth in a way that doesn't need to predict the future and to do it in a manner that only life can. Thank you. <laughs>